David Payne has done it again. You might remember David from some of the projects that we've done on this channel, like the print monitor and the Wi-Fi scrolling marquee. Well, now David has this do-it-yourself kit called the Chrome Guitar Amp. So the kit is actually a PCB with all the components that you can solder up yourself, but he offers 3D printed parts that you can download and customize whatever enclosure you wish. So since you can put this in pretty much any box you want and pick which speakers you'd like to use, you can get really creative with this project. David contacted me and asked if I would like to try a kit out for myself, and of course I said yes. It's music, it's 3D printed, it's electronics, I'm in. Now David did send me all the components to build this amp free of charge, and I did use a few things that don't come in the DIY kit. You're going to need a box, a speaker, and a few other odds and ends. But I'm going to do my best to put together a list of everything I used in this video in the description below and where you can get them. So let's get to building the PCB. So here's everything that comes in the kit. It's everything to build the amp module. You get the quarter inch jack, you get some jumpers, some capacitors, a couple of potentiometers, and the PCB to solder everything onto, as well as an LM386 amplifier chip. It also comes with a diagram that looks pretty self-explanatory. I'll just go through it piece by piece as we put it together. You'll also need a speaker of some type. This is an 8 ohm 25 watt 3 inch. That should be good enough for my build. As well as some sort of enclosure to put it in. I'm just going to put it in this little pine box. David actually sent this to me with my kit. And it's going to be handy to have some extra screws to put your grill and install your speaker, as well as some wires and maybe a few other connectors. This is a DC jack. That might be handy to have as well. You can power the whole thing with a 9-volt battery if you need to. And here are the printed parts that David has created for this project. Of course, mine had to be orange. There's a grill for your 3-inch speaker. There's some washers to use on the speaker grill if you need it. There's some feet that you can screw onto the bottom of your enclosure. There's a base tube, and then there's a couple of different types of knobs in there. You can use the one that you like. I'm going to go ahead and use two of these, one for my volume and one for my gain. So let's start with the lowest profile component first, and we'll work our way up. So let's start by putting on the resistors. All the locations are really well labeled. So we have a 10R resistor right there. We have to put a 10K right here, and a 330R right there. Your 10R goes there. This one's actually more like a 600, but it goes in this 330 slot here. It's for the LED, so it shouldn't really matter. Right like that. And then our 10K goes right here. Just like that. The resistors are on. I'm going to go ahead and solder these up and clip the extra off the back. And then we can put on our amplifier chip socket. You just want to make sure the groove in the top of the socket is lined up with the board. So it has the same groove here, so you know you have it the right way. It just sits in here like this. And we can go ahead and solder that up. And now we'll do the 0.1 UF capacitors. You have one here, here, and then one over here. The 0.1s are on. We'll go ahead and solder those up. The 0.1s are in. And then we'll move on to the 470 capacitor. There's only one, and it goes right here, like so. Now we can put the LED on. And this is the first part that's actually polarized. So it matters which leg goes where. So the LED goes right here. And the long leg is the positive leg on the LED, and it has to go in this side right here. So just like this. So positive long leg, short leg negative. Now we can install our jumpers for different connections. I like going with the jumpers because I can take things apart if I need to. Now you could solder these if you wanted to, but I'm going to install the jumpers. So let's do all the double jumpers first. You can cut that strip up that came with the kit to get these. So we'll have a double here. A double here, a double right above that one, a double up here, and a double over here. So we'll get those soldered up. All the double headers are on. We have a triple header that goes right here. We can go ahead and solder that up. And then in my opinion, the tricky one, we have a single that goes right here. And now all the header pins are on. And before we build too much higher, let's go ahead and put the chip in the socket. On these chips, pin one is this little dot cut out right here. You want to make sure that U at the top lines up with the U where you put on your holder. So it goes in just like this. Be careful not to bend these pins. Amplifier chip installed. 
Now we'll keep going, putting some of our capacitors on. This is a 10. These capacitors are polarized, so make sure you put them in the right spot. The long leg is positive. So the long leg goes on this side, the side that's not filled in. The gray part on the capacitor goes to the side that is filled in. So the long leg goes right here, just like that. And we'll go ahead and put our other 10 on. It goes over here. Long leg to the side that's not filled in. This side here goes in just like that. Then we'll jump up to our 100. It goes right here. Again, long leg to the side that isn't filled in. That's the positive side, just like that. And then we'll put on our 1,000, same way. Long leg, side that's not filled in, just like that. And our board is done. Now we're gonna take our jumpers and we're just gonna strip three of them off. We're gonna take these three and we're gonna cut them in half. We're gonna use them for our quarter inch jack. With those cut, go ahead and strip the insulation off on the ends. And when those are stripped, we're gonna go ahead and tin the ends of those wires. Or just put some solder on the end so it makes them easier to use. You can put some flux on the ends before you tin them. That makes the solder stick even better. Our wires are tinned. Now we're going to add the wires to our audio jack. The audio jack is actually going to be the switch that turns the whole thing on and off as well. So these two pins are ground, and this is your audio in. But when you slide that jack in, it's actually going to turn everything on as well. So we're going to solder these up. These two ground, that one audio. We'll go ahead and put some solder on it before we put the wire on it to help it stick. And we'll put the purple wire down on this side. We'll put the blue wire in the center. Easier said than done. Then we'll put the green wire here down on the end. Like so. Now we'll wire up the potentiometers. You can go ahead and put some solder on all of these leads. We'll take one and we'll take the other side of the wires that we cut. And we'll wire it up green, blue, purple. Like so. Then we'll take our gray and white wires. We'll go ahead and cut those in half. Go ahead and strip and tin those. And then we'll put the white wire on the center post on this other potentiometer and the gray wire on this post right here, like that. Let's solder a couple more DuPont connectors onto our speaker. I'm going to use brown for positive and black for negative. That's just because of what I had, like so, positive and negative. And now we need some power. So I'm just going to use this DuPont connector and this pigtail and solder it on a jack for a 12 volt supply. I just have an extra 12 volt supply laying around with a barrel connector and then I'm going to attach this to the back of the box. So I'll just solder these two on. On my power supply in this jack, the long lead was the outside sleeve and the short one was the inside and my power supply is center positive. And you can tell that by this diagram here if you need to know. Now we can start getting everything all wired up. We'll start with the audio jack. Remember the two pins that are closest to the jack are the switch. This one is the audio in. So we'll put green on the audio in pin right here. And then the other two pins go on the switch pin. It doesn't really matter which one goes on which. It'll act the same way. The switch pins right there. Now we can do the volume knob. It goes on these three pins right here. The center pin has to stay consistent, but the negative and positive leads, that's what determines which way is up or down for your volume. We want the volume to go from left to right. So we'll put the purple lead that's on the left on the negative side, our blue lead in the center, and then our green on the positive side. And then we'll hook up our gain knob. You don't have to hook this up, but it's not going to have a lot of volume if you don't. So I definitely want this. It's going to give it kind of an overdrive sound. It goes on these pins right here. Doesn't really matter which pin goes on which. Then we can hook up our speaker. This is polarized. Make sure you put the positive closest to the capacitor. My positive has a brown wire, negative, black. And our power is going to go right here. There's a plus and a minus. Make sure you have this correct before you try to turn it on. It plugs in just like this. Now we can go ahead and plug in our power. And the guitar cable is actually what switches this on. So let's go ahead and plug in our guitar. The LED's on. That's a good sign. I hear some audio. And it sounds like our guitar is working. Our bench test has been successful. Make sure your knobs work as well. So as far as enclosures go, you can pretty much put these in anything you'd like. This is a really simple box. I think you can get these at most craft stores, so I'm going to use this. But you could get really creative with this thing. So I'm going to mount my speaker on the bottom so it sets kind of like this. So I have an access door for all my stuff. For the speaker, I need a 3 inch hole. And you could cut this with any type of saw that you would like. But I want a nice round hole and want to get it done quick. So I'm going to use this 3 inch hole saw that I got off of Amazon. 
I'm going to use the grill as my pattern to kind of line things up. Kind of a fun tip, if you use this grill that David provides, the center section right here of the expanded actually has 11 compartments. So if you use the sixth one, that'll get you pretty much dead center. So I've got it marked. I'm going to go ahead and cut my hole. Looks good. Let's go ahead and make sure our speaker still lines up nice and straight. Looks like it's a pretty nice fit and the holes still line up for the screws. I'm going to use an eighth inch drill bit for the screw holes to mount the speaker. I have some number six screws that I'm going to use to attach it. I'm going to put the volume and gain knobs right here. I'm going to use a 5 16 inch bit. That way I can use the nut and washer that comes on the potentiometer to attach them. Now we can go ahead and mount the knobs. There's our gain knob and our volume. And I think I'll put my power jack down over on this end. I'm going to use a 5 16 for this one as well. Power jack is in. I think I'll put my guitar cable jack on the same side, pretty much the same thing. The jack I have is actually a 3 8 so I'm going to use a 3 8 bit. Cable jack is in, and then I cut a hole for the base tube. It's 3 quarter, it's quite a bit larger, so I used a paddle bit, but that's where the 3D printed insert for that will go. And I'm going to mount my PCB kind of in this area over here on the bottom, but I'm going to use it on the other side for a template to drill the holes. So it's going to sit on the inside of the box, something like that. So I'll mark my holes, and I'm going to use some plastic screws to mount the PCB just to be safe. The head on the screw will set outside the box, but is actually shorter than the feet that I'm going to put on the bottom of the box. So it shouldn't interfere with how the box sets. I'm going to do 8 inch holes for these as well. I'm just going to stick my screws through, and then I'll just set the board on those screw pegs. And the plastic screws usually come with these plastic nuts, so that's what I'll just tighten it down with. Now the board's in, we can go ahead and plug everything back in just like we did when we tested it out. We can go ahead and install our speaker. The grill will go on like this. I'm going to set some washers underneath it, these plastic ones, like so. And then the speaker will be on the back side of the box. So I'm going to put the speaker terminals towards the board and just set it in like this. Then on the front, we can put our washer down and then our grill will be right here. And I'm going to put the whole thing together with some number six by three quarter inch machine screws. Our speaker and grill are on. It's bolted on the back right here. And now I can go ahead and plug that in. Now let's put some feet on the bottom, these printed feet right here. I'm going to put two on the door and two on the other side, just like that. I'm going to use these super tiny wood screws that I happen to have. And our feet are on. And we can slide in our base tube. I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue to hold that in there permanent. We can slide our knobs on, plug in your power and your guitar, and you are literally ready to rock. And there you go. You have built your very own guitar amp. Now I really like this project. It puts together soldering and electronics, and it's highly customizable. You can pick whichever enclosure you'd like. You could add some speakers if you wanted to. You can even change up the 3D printed parts. Again, David did send me all these components to build this amp free of charge. That's much appreciated. But he also sent me an extra PCB kit that I can give away to you. So if you'd like to get yourself one of these PCB kits, just leave a comment below and in a week I'll select one of you at random and then I will mail you your kit free of charge worldwide. Now David does also sell these kits online and they're very reasonable. But he's also given us a discount code that's good for one month that'll get you some money off. So check that code out as well. I'll leave all of David's information in the description below, as well as a parts list of everything I used for this build. A big thanks to David for all the projects he does. They're always a great time. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.